So I just spent an hour and a half wasting my life. <laughs> uh, on the recommendation of a few people, I listened to a certain video of a certain individual of whom I'm, I'm not going to mention the name. A, I guess a, semi, a semi-popular occultist. Someone that definitely has a lot of things correct, but in listening to him, there's so much that is just absolutely borrowed and ill-constructed that it was hard to stomach. And to listen to him talk about evocation and use phrases and terms that I know I've used, I know that other people have used, I've never heard about this guy until maybe about six months ago, and just about everything that I can find out and know for absolute certain, he's a hoax and a sham. And so you can thank him. I'm not going to say who he is, but thank him for lighting a fire under my ass and making sure that I get this information out, because if morons like him are supplying the occult world on the internet, I just... We are in sorry, sorry shape. That's all I can say. So, welcome to the first edition of the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. This is a big, big ritual. And in terms of the symbolic significance and the astral-physical linkages between you and your astral body and all your other planetary intelligences, this is the ritual that is really going to take the middle pillar ritual and move it into a functional exercise. That's not to say that the middle pillar isn't a functional exercise, but this is a much more active engagement style ritual in that because the crucifixion mystery is so strong in this ritual and because this is a true magical warrior style ritual it will activate and give you a sense of purpose and power and a real strong sense of protection so you can operate on any sort of planetary sphere and come into contact with any type of entity. And as long as you're true to yourself and to your beliefs and to the tradition that you are following, this is pretty much ironclad. It is very strong, very potent, and begins to work a certain type of alchemy, an inner energetic alchemy, a change that does indeed begin to formulate and put you as your higher self. So this is one of those rituals that truly does um, encompass the true trilogy mystery of mother, father, golden child, of love, war, and the mystery between the two, or you could say Mars, Venus, and Cupid. This is... This is that style of ritual, of full activation. And because the Tree of Life is based off this middle pillar path and pillar of uh, severity and pillar of, of, well, they say mercy, but it's not really mercy. It's more of beneficiality. Uh, You have that beauty inspires strength and strength supports beauty, and the middle path is that Eros or Cupid path uh, to the higher self and the embodiment of the mysteries of love and war. In my tradition, this is sort of the mysteries of the rose and cross, or I'm sorry, the rose and thorn. Rose and cross works on this as well, but it's slightly different. Eventually, it's, it's sort of the same thing anyways. So, This is going to be part one. This is the first initial step, and I'm going to release this in four steps. And I want everyone to really get a good idea of not only, they're not just chanting some words and tracing some some pentagrams. It's so much deeper than that. And the more you recognize, the more you can become the ritual. So it's not so much you doing a ritual, it is you are activating 
in response to the ritual, that the ritual is so much a part of you and activating you on so many different levels that it, be, it, it just starts from the physical realm and just skyrockets upward. So speaking of physical realm, in my last video we talked about the uh, crosses on the tree of life. So because the physical realm was so utterly important, this is where we begin. Step one is the realization of the higher self. So the process really is starting from an earth-based cross with the Saturnine circle. This is symbolic because you are going to be standing in the middle of what is your own sphere of personal influence. Okay? You are the crossroads. You are the master of your own destiny. You are the crossroads, the combination of all other planetary alignments and energies focusing down and beaming into you. You are at the crossroads. Your physical body is the densification, the overlayering of all your other planetary bodies into your physical body. That's what it makes up. Now, the Saturnine circle is the containing force of space and time that restrict but also hold together, build, and structure your physical world. Yes, you are limited here, but you are limited only in the same way that a giant heavy weight limits you. Eventually, you use that weight to get stronger rather than allow it to oppress you. It's your choice. Make the fucking right one. So, in most other uh, Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram modalities, you would then engage in a growing process. Now, this is actually very important. To allow your astral body to become very, very, very large. This is important because it activates and expands your awareness and comes to show you the totality, the sheer unlimited potential that is within you. And so for you to grow and to expand is very, very important. You are teaching your astral body to grow and expand by performing this practice. So as you stand in your sphere of influence and contemplate on your divine nature, allow your astral body to expand as big and big and big and bigger as you can imagine. Don't force this. Again, Relaxation is key into imagination. Struggling is counterproductive. Simply allow your astral body to grow to the point that it is comfortable. Past that, you're forcing and straining it. You are working against yourself. You simply must allow yourself to grow. And so, from the center of your Saturnine circle, of your own personal sphere, of influence, you allow yourself to grow upward okay now this encompasses your solar self, your higher self, so we have grown from our awareness solely based on the physical plane now into your higher self which is at the very center of all that is the astral world your astral body activates and expands into you as being the solar center of your own micro universe and in reflection to be the solar center of the entire universe so, like in the other video, this is the limited, fully limited circle. This now makes the solar cross. This is now you as your astral self. You as purely physical. You now as fully aware of your astral activation. You are now moving past the boundaries of time and space. Although you are not completely free of them, your influence now expands past the physical world. Influence on the physical world, influence on the astral realm. Do you see the difference? You are extending, expanding your reach. 
your influence now has power and moves past just the physical limitations of time and space into an interdimensional realm, highly interdimensional realm. Now let's take this a step further. Actually, you know what? We're going to wait on that. We're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that, but let's wait on that. So as you allow your energy body to expand as far as it can, you should realize now that you are in a void of space. You are massive and huge and your influence is extremely far reaching, but you are in a void of space. Your astral body should look like a much more, I guess we're going to use the word perfected, but again, that's one of those troublesome words. You should see yourself as your idealized self because this is your solar self. You are now engaging and embodying your solar champion, your inner hero is represented by the solar cross, okay? This, for those who don't know, planetarily is Sol, or Tapareth, right here. This is Terra, or in the Kabbalist term, Malkuth. So we have moved up. Now, Yasad would be right about here, meaning that you've entered into the astral realm, and you are now expanding in all directions. And we'll get into that as well. So, You've expanded your astral body to, gig to gigantic proportions, and you are standing in a void of space, in an idealized state, in vivid color, fully prepared, and in actualization of your grander self. From this point, you will take your power hand. Your power hand is the hand you write with. This hand, I write with it. This is the hand that I use. Hello. So, you will touch above your head. Now this is very important because above your head is the planetary crown of Uranus. Okay? It floats above your head. It never actually touches it. It's an interesting mystery there because heavy, very heavy is the head that wears, that wears the crown. As you enter into this ritual and you become a channel for that crown, it is very important to realize that you and the crown have a very slight degree of separation between the two. You are responsible for what happens to you and you are responsible for what happens to the people around you because of your actions. So you are king or queen of your life in that regard. But you cannot, nor will you ever, truly wear the full crown because that is responsibility that is far beyond your capability to understand. So you may channel that crown. You may so ever briefly catch a glimpse of having it maybe slightly touch your head. But for all intents and purposes, that power is forever out of reach. The reason being is because you must forever strain and struggle and question and fight and toil and labor to earn the right to wear that crown. As you develop your potential, you will get closer and closer to that crown, but you will never ever fully attain it. This is to keep you growing and expanding. This is to keep you growing and expanding your astral body bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. It is like that Chinese dragon that chases that pearl of wisdom. He will never catch the pearl of wisdom. But it is the learning process, it is the attempt that he gains wisdom. So whether or not you actually ever wear this crown is almost a mute point. It is the fact that you are continually struggling to be worthy to wear it. Very deep mystery here. It is the process, it is the work, and not the grace it is work by which you are bestowed grace and not the other way around. This is how Christianity fucked things and one of its many ways that it fucked things. But you grow your astral body to try and attain that which is unattainable and in doing so, attain much more than you ever knew possible and ever will know possible. This is very important. So as you feel the presence, the great 
unimaginable, unmanifested divinity that is Uranus, that is Kether, above your head in a brilliant, amazing, bright white sphere of light. You can see the planetary symbol of Uranus in that bright white lightness and touch it ever so briefly with your power hand and then draw that essence down into your forehead about the third eye level. As you do that, you will vibrate the planetary realm Uranus as long and slow and drawn out as possible. As this happens, your entire head fills with light, beams with light. Your entire inner head should flood with light. I have had true third eye awakenings in this moment. Absolutely, positively true third eye awakenings. In the true sense, in a actual opening and not a chaotic explosion, but a true opening has occurred for me many, many, many times. Allow that light to stimulate every mental faculty that you have. It should not be intense. It should be rejuvenating. It should be vitalizing, but it should not be so intense that you cannot ex simply exist in this bright white light that is now filling your head. This is very important. This bright white light will, will vitalize all the cells in your body and will rejuvenate and strengthen. It is very powerful for the immune system. It strengthens and heals your energetic bodies, heals your mind. It does amazing things for you. Now, after you vibrate the planetary name Uranus, you will say in plain English, the glory of all that is heaven. The glory of all that is heaven. That is a beautiful thing. The glory of all that is heaven. And you will use that finger that is still on your third eye forehead and you will trace down the front of your astral slash physical body and past and point towards your, your groin area. That's the penis or vagina. Um, <laughs> which represents the storehouse of sexual energy which is the moon, which is Yassad. You will point there and allow this powerful bright white light to, f to flow down from your head. Actually, it flows as your finger traces down the front of your body. It goes all the way down. The white light follows it and goes down your spine, which again is like the middle pillar path. It clears the middle channel. Very important to do. Very important to clear, clear your middle channel. Banishes entities and intelligences that shouldn't be there. It begins to get synovial fluid flowing in your spine and begins to open up a lot of energetic blockages. Again, this takes time. Do this slowly. Don't force anything. Just simply, it's like it's like glowing water. It's going to flow. You can't force water to flow, but as you direct it, it'll get easier and easier and easier. Your hand, by virtue of the fact that it's, you know, not seven feet long, will stop around your groin area, okay? Direct that white light further down through your astral feet into your physical space and beyond. Now, there's a reason for this, and we'll get here, okay? We will get here. So, you allow it to trace out into infinity forever. Now, as you direct this energy into your astral feet, which also link to the physical world, you will vibrate the planetary name of Terra. Okay? And allow your feet to feel at the same time anchored, but at the same time as though you were transcending the physical world itself. It's sort of a funny feeling, and maybe you shouldn't even try. Just, just allow it to be what it needs to be, because it will eventually become what it needs to be. Just simply project the white light, direct the white light further past your feet, and vibrate the name Terra, which is the planetary realm, the planetary intelligence for the physical world itself. Now, after you say that in plain English, say... 
the glory of heaven made real. So not only are we talking about the glories of all that is heaven and where it comes from, the ideas, the creativity, the inspirations, but now you are making those things real. It is physical work that will build the kingdom of heaven upon this earth. So, heaven, earth, you are building the kingdom of all, the glory of all which is heaven upon the earth. Because if it's not built upon the earth, it never really truly becomes real. And this is, it just, yes, links the above with the below. It's very powerful. You will feel a powerful current that goes down your body. Sometimes give you chills. Now, with that same power hand, I want you to touch your right shoulder. The shoulder is the thing that bears the burdens. Now, this is, this is physically why. Now, no other occult teacher really talks about this because they don't know it. You touch the shoulder. The shoulder is what bears the burdens. And so Mars, or the right side of the shoulder, is the first of the two great burdens. Well, technically the third, or the, I'm sorry, the second, because you would say the crown is the first, but because you don't ever technically bear that burden fully, it is, Mars is considered the first. The first great burden is the power of planetary Mars. So, by touching your right shoulder, you will intone the, the planetary energy of Mars, and you will vibrate Mars deep, long, and slow. Okay? Now, it's important to realize that the shoulder also is the part that, it's the socket that controls the arm. Without the shoulder, the, the, the arm would be useless. Okay? So, let me get to something absolutely here. Because I sometimes say things that are slightly different due to... Um, my own personal work and some of the things that I've done, but uh, this is something absolutely that I want you to say. Let me get to it really quick. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, there we go. All right, that's what I wanted. You are shouldering the burden of Mars. The shoulder, the socket. You can't swing a sword without a shoulder. It's just not possible. You just can't do it. That is why it's so important that Mars is in the right shoulder. Most people were right-handed. Most swordsmen were right-handed. Most knights, most warriors were right-handed. This is just the breakdown. This is just how it happens. So as you touch your right shoulder and you vibrate the planetary realm of Mars, in plain English, I want you to say, May terrifying strength uphold benevolence. Yes. May terrifying strength uphold benevolence. So, you got Mars power. What are you doing with it? Because you can do a lot of fucked up shit with Mars power. But in this particular case, in your astral self, in your actualization, in your realizing, in your embodiment of becoming your inner champion... You are stating, yes, I hold, I bear the burden of Mars, okay? But I bear it so that it may uphold benevolence. Imagine strength applied to help people, strength applied to offer support and protection, strength applied in right action. I mean, almost it's treasonous in this world that we live in because of the amazing fucking stupidity that that happens in it and what happens when a small power elite take powerful information and keep it from you and release little bits and pieces of it that's never meant to work not in a full chain of occultic congruency and like this other idiot who I had to listen to an hour and a half talk about who could talk about the links but never put it together in a full chain. So this is part of that chain. Your shoulder that you are burdening the powers of Mars is actually helping uphold benevolency. So as you, as, as, as you say that and you draw from your right shoulder, your finger across your chest, 
to your left shoulder and that bright white light forms across it, okay, you are, you are now symbolizing the strength path between Mars and Jupiter. This is the strength path, the strength to bear the burdens, the strength to do all that you need to do. This is that path. This is part of the crucifixion mystery, the spear of Mars, the sword of Mars, the axe of power. It doesn't matter. Okay, this this it goes through the heart of the matter. It goes to the center of you, the balance between destruction and creation. All right, the balance between um, the catabol the 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 catabolic force of breaking down and the anabolic force of building up. So the other burden that you bear now is the power of Jupiter. Some people would say, well, why is this a burden? Well, because you have to be responsible for the things you create. You're responsible for the things that you bring together. You're responsible for the people that you bring into your life. So while this is the strength that helps uphold benevolence, Jupiter is the power that tempers this terrifying strength of Mars. So you draw your power finger across your chest, that bright white light connects from shoulder to shoulder, or technically from, well, probably nipple to nipple, to be true, and you, you vibrate, now touching your left shoulder, you vibrate the planetary energy of Jupiter. And in plain English, you say, may benevolence temper terrifying strength. May terrifying strength uphold benevolence, and may benevolence temper terrifying strength. May you stay your sword hand if you don't need to use it. Everyone will know that you have the ability, that you have the strength, that you have the skill to do fucked up Mars shit. But Everyone should also know that you have the wisdom, the compassion, the insight, and the wherewithal to stay your hand instead of immediately being impulsive. But should you need to, you have the wisdom to use the sword of Mars. And should you need to, you have the power of Mars to defend the beneficentiality of Jupiter. Does that make sense? This is a powerful practice. Put in these terms, you are absolutely positively performing an alchemy that is just amazing, that will change your spiritual perspectives a full one. I mean, I'm seriously, like a full 180. People who, who perform this ritual in this way oftentimes have religious experiences that just transcend any other experiences that they had because they are now becoming fully part of their solar self. So, we've created the solar cross now. Now, allow both hands to come to your sides and make a cross yourself. Make, make a large astral self, a large cross. Now, here's the interesting thing. Your physical body is performing these movements. At the same time, your astral body is performing these movements. This is called a unification. Okay? So now make a full cross and allow that energy to flow down the front of your body and out in all directions from the heart center all the way out your left hand and all the way out your right hand. And experience that feeling of that full conduit of energy leading into and down and energy radiating out from the right and from the left. Okay? Now, I'm going to add something that I'm going to talk about later, but it is a vital part of this practice. Not only will you have energy that flows out from your right hand on into infinity and from your left hand on out into infinity, from your solar plexus will beam a light directly in front of you out into infinity and directly behind you out into infinity. This is very important, and we'll get to why this is at a later date, but I want people to start to feel that activation. Now, 
because that's going to open up and expand the full sphere because there is actually an astral sphere and a physical sphere. There, there, there are many spheres. There's many spheres within spheres, within circles, within circles. This is one of the activations of a very powerful solar current that at some point we'll get to. This is also another part of the Grand Cross, which right now, uh, at a later date, I'll go into more of it. But a beam of light should also beam from the front of you, from your solar plexus, and then from out behind you in the back area, kind of your scapula area. Uh, so like a direct thread of light will beam from your solar plexus, from, from your back, and from the front of your chest. This, this completes a very powerful circuit of energy. I'll come back and do part two of part one. Yay.